What's up guys? Welcome to In Future Tense. Uh, this video is going to be a little different because we're going back to our old format, but now we've got our screens turned the right way around and a little bit more uh, updated on the opening and closing, uh, which you've already seen once or twice, but hopefully now the way it's formatted with uh, everything will flow smoothly. <laughs> Welcome to Manai Monday. <laughs> Let's talk about insecurity. All right, guys. So there's one thing that everyone has in common. What is it? No, no, it's not. It's not finances. We're not all poor. Some of us are rich, and that's not talking about me. That's talking about like Trump. But anyway, I'm not rich. You're not rich. We all be good. So anyway, no. The one thing we all have in common is that at one point or another, whether it's right now or in the past, we've all been insecure about something. Whether it's finances, like I was just joking about. Um, just joking. I hope. If you're not poor, I love you. If you're poor, I love you. But anyway, some of us are insecure financially. Some of us are insecure politically. We don't know which way we want to go in this big old mess that the government's created. Um, some of us are insecure socially. We don't know how to interact. Some of us have insecurities when it comes to uh, work. We don't know how to uh, do certain things and it's hard for us to ask for help as far as training. Uh, some people are insecure when it comes to schooling, like college or even high school. I know all of us are insecure at some point in high school, uh, socially at least. Um, sometimes we have hard times with homework, blah, blah, blah. Um, but the point is, at some point in our lives, we're always going to face insecurity. Now the question is, what do you do with that? Me? I just wear pajama pants and daredevil shirts at the same time. And I know it's not daredevil, but he is a daredevil because he's Deadpool. So either he's stupid or he's a daredevil. So I'm going to go with daredevil. But the point is, this is what I do. And this is called overcompensation. And I'm not talking about that kind of overcompensation because I don't got that problem. But the point is, some people express themselves through clothing when they have insecurities. Some people express themselves through overspending when they're insecure. Some people lock themselves in their room and play video games all the time when they're insecure. Some people uh, overcompensate with cleanliness, hygiene. Some people uh, overcompensate uh, with OCD, making sure everything's straightened, making sure everything's a certain way. I don't have the hygiene and OCD problem. My wife can tell you that. But uh, point is, we all have a way of expressing uh, insecurity. We all have a way of dealing with insecurity. Now, the question is whether or not that is healthy. Uh, depends on the definition of healthy. Because reality is, half the time, we don't express and deal with our insecurity the right way. Um... For one, I should probably be dressed, it's the middle of the day, and I should probably be going out and having breakfast with my family. So when I'm done with all you people, I just might do that. Uh, two, spending all your money doesn't make you feel better about your finances. It'll actually make you feel worse. Of course, I have an Xbox 360, an Xbox One, a PlayStation 3, a, uh, 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 everything. So, I don't know how I feel. Like, I have overcompensated to the point where I don't know <laughs> anymore. But, um, you know, being locked in your room, talking to people who are on the other side of the country is awesome. Especially when you're shooting each other, which express political, religious, and personal rage. So, that's good. But, I mean, that only goes so far because... I mean, it's unusual. It happens. Believe me. Not to me, because I'm not weird. Because I'm not different. Because I don't do that. But some people do meet their friends that they meet online in real life. I'm not one of those people. But um, 
the likelihood of you meeting someone online and actually meeting them in person someday and them not trying to kill you or kidnap you or steal your social security number, the chances of that, not great. But the point is, playing video games in your room is fun, but it's not productive. Not all the time. I mean, it can help relieve angst, but it can't help you make friends. It can't help you get out there and build bridges for yourself. It can't build your financial level. If anything, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. But anyway, it's not going to help you out. And so what we want to talk about today is how we can overcome issues like overcompensating financially, um, overcompensating with video game systems, and this is going to come from a complete hypocrite who knows exactly what he's doing wrong. So stay tuned. <laughs> what do we do to overcome insecurity in a healthy and positive manner because we're always going to have insecurity because we don't know everything. There's always going to be a point of weakness where we have to ask ourselves what kind of person we are, how much we know, how mortal we are. These are the questions that everyone will face at some point. So you have to deal with insecurity at some point. How? Here's how. Surround yourself with good people. When I'm having an issue where I'm feeling insecure, I talk to my wife. That's like the best captive audience ever, by the way. Get married, captive audience. Of course, it goes the other way around, but hey, you know, <laughs> save me. Talk to your wife, which is what I do, or your spouse, or your uh, life partner, whatever. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not going to put you in a box because everybody's free to love however they want to love. I stand by that, and I will stand by that. Back off, haters. Uh, you could talk to your spouse, your partner, your life partner, your soulmate, whatever. Uh, you could talk to a best friend. Um, I don't know if I currently have a best friend. I have brothers that I have adopted, uh, but my best friend, unfortunately, me and him, we fell out a while back, and I replaced him with someone who I thought was my best friend, but he was actually an ex, so it's kind of a mess. Um, I don't currently have a best friend, which is hard. So my wife right now is my best friend, which is how it's supposed to work, gentlemen, ladies, everybody, say it with me. Love is love. Your love is your best friend. Okay. But anyway, uh, you can talk to your best friend. Uh, the great thing about best friends is real best friends will kick you when you're down. And that may sound weird. But believe me, I've been in enough fights to tell you when I'm down and somebody kicks me, I'm going to get mad! But I always get up and I always kick the snot out of whatever the problem is, whether it's them or <laughs> the actual problem in this case. Okay, so when your friend kicks you when you're down and tells you, dude, what the hell are you doing? Get the hell up and stop being a baby. You know, or hey, come on, girl, you need to get your act together. You know, you get your act together, you get up, and you and your best friend charge into the breach once more okay that's what best friends are for you know you guys go out get food fine you guys get together and talk and complain about boys or girls whatever uh fine um next thing is of course you have family you have your parents to help you with financial advice uh and believe me they would be more than happy to help you because they know everything Um, you have, uh, your neighbors who can tell you, uh, about their children. And if you're brave as a young adult, talk to the older neighbors. They know things that you have no idea about. I've done this and it's benefited me more than I can count. If you just walk over to your neighbor, start complaining about whatever problems you have, I guarantee you they have similar problems. It's just the way of the universe. Okay, um, so you have uh, your your spouse, you have your parents, you have your neighbors, uh, colleagues. I guarantee whatever problem you got at work that's making you feel insecure, somebody else has the same problem. I'm currently working as a supervisor. Don't know how long it'll last, but I appreciate the position and I love the position, but I complain about the position because it's a hard job. It's, it's hard work. 
Uh, I talk to the people I can trust at work, and they always have something positive and helpful to say. They understand from their perspective how things work, and I understand things from my perspective how things work. So the people that I trust, we figure out their problems, we brainstorm, and I take action depending on what I think is right or wrong. And thankfully, now that I've been doing that, it's been getting easier. So if you have a work insecurity, deal with it like that. Um, if you have a political insecurity, talk to your pastor, if he's a good pastor. Uh, if, if you're religious, I, like, again, I don't discriminate. Whatever you believe is awesome. You know, go for it. But talk to your pastor if he's uh, politically correct and he knows how things work. And I'm not saying politically correct like he kisses, but like he's politically correct in that he knows how the system works and he knows how to help you make a decision. That's how my pastor is. My pastor has very strong opinions. Very strong. But he also respects you building your own opinion, even if he thinks it's wrong. And he'll tell you, but he'll tell you, this is what you need to look at. This is what you need to decide. This is the morality. This is the right or wrong. And he lets you build your own opinion. So if you have a pastor that can do that for you, talk to them because they are going to be morally correct if they're a good pastor. Um, again, you could talk to your parents. They've been around a while. I know man has. But anyway, um, you could talk to your neighbors again because what is going to happen with the next election might affect them. Uh, the, the housing market might be affected. The employment market might be affected. You know, friends. So the point I'm making is you have a whole group of people. Talk to people, real people. People online have the same problems, but there's something about sitting right here face to face with someone else. And, and having them smile, having them laugh, having them frown, having them do that look like, what? Like, it makes a difference when you have someone in front of you that you can bounce off of and see and interact with. So go talk to somebody about your insecurity. Now, here's the thing about it. You have to overcome your insecurity. Because if you go through life being insecure and not dealing with it, you're going to take yourself out of a lot of opportunity. You're going to miss out on a lot of awesome events and a lot of awesome um, a lot of awesome things just in general and I'm realizing this over the last two years okay because when I was going through uh, elementary school insanely insecure I don't know why there was just a lot of insecurity something wasn't right I found out later I was adopted and that I think was it because I felt like there was something off and I didn't know what it was uh, but when I found out I was adopted it was no surprise so I think that's what it was I mean it was a, it was definitely something to work through but that's another story. Um, you know, I went through elementary school awkward. I was always having a hard time socially, and I was always a social butterfly, but in the wrong way. I was that kid that made everybody nervous. Do I make you nervous? I went through junior high. It was a very hard time. Kids were picking on me. Kids were bullying me. I was getting into physical confrontations, which, by the way, I was successful at getting the boys to leave me alone. So, BAM! But, uh, you know, I went through all that stuff, uh, pantsing, all that stuff, even though it only happened twice, because I kicked their butts when I caught them. The first time I didn't catch them, second time I did. I win! But anyway, um, high school, hard time. I was coming into myself. I was a good actor. I was uh, doing okay, uh, better than I did in, in junior high, because I literally had Fs in everything in junior high. I went through that whole gothic, I hate everybody, face, ah, punk rock time. But -da 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 -da. But, um, you know, I did all that. And then I went through high school. I started coming to myself, acting more, uh, taking on lead roles, uh, writing, uh, listening to a lot of music. Michael Jackson is the best. Um, doing a lot of things that helped me get inspired and step out of my show. But the problem is I was still awkward. So I pushed a lot of really good people away from me. And I regret that now. But um, the point is I've been there. We're all insecure. We're all dealing with things. And the healthy way to deal with those things is to talk to people and not always complain. But, of course, complain and tell them what's on your mind and then listen to what they have to say. It's, it's, it goes both ways because if you talk to somebody, you need to let them talk back to you. Because, first of all, if you talk to them, great. You got it off your chest. But it's just going to build up. So let them talk back to you and get their uh, take on everything. And take that to heart. That's important. You need to take it to heart. Okay? So do that for me. Do it for yourself. I promise things will get better. 
just make sure you don't jump into the wrong thing. If you see somebody and red flags are waving, just be like, I'm going to go now. Okay. Um, but, you know, that's what you got to do. Deal with your insecurity. Uh, be proud of where you are. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Donald Trump isn't perfect. Churches aren't perfect. Nothing in this world is even close to perfect right now. Nothing. Nothing is perfect. But be proud of the fact that you are where you are. Okay? You're alive. You're watching a video that is trying to help you be a better person. That's progress, especially if you made it this far. So pat yourself on the back. You made it this far. <laughs> Okay, but you made it this far. You know, you're trying to help yourself. That's two things in your favor. Uh, three, hopefully you got yourself dressed this morning. Or this is going to be kind of awkward. But, um, you know, that's three things in your favor right there. You got up this morning. You're alive. You're with us. And you're trying to help yourself. Good job, guys. You should be proud. And a lot of people will say snowflakes is the term for you. And that's because they don't understand. The older generation has put us millennials in a box. And it's true that we need to man and woman up. And we need to step up. And we need to stop being wusses about everything. I'm sorry if I offend you with that. But it's true. You are a human being. You can walk. You can talk. You can punch. You can kick you can uh, write you can type you can use a phone you are an amazing thing amazing person you can do anything you put your mind to if you have enough willpower so I agree don't be a wuss but your feelings and what you're going through are real you need to step into it be proud of where you are today and work towards something that you can be proud of again later don't put yourself in a box. You can't go anywhere in a box except around in circles. Okay, that's the only circle you can fit into a square. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's all you're going to do. Um, get off your video games every once in a while. Go call your friends. Say, hey, you guys want to go to Applebee's? Oh, yeah, sure. That sounds great. Oh, sorry, wrong number. Hey, you guys want to go to Applebee's? Okay, let's go to Applebee's. Oh my gosh, this is going to be great. What are you still doing on the line? Get on the phone with your friends, set something up, go hang out with them, talk about what's going on in your lives. You know, uh, make a decision, step into that decision, own that decision, and if you're wrong, figure it out. Everybody's wrong sometimes. Everybody. And if you're right, be proud that you made a good decision. We all go through insecurity. We're all human. We all need to own that. Because no one is righteous, no, not one. And yes, that's a Bible verse, but it's also a life truth. We all mess up. What makes a difference is if you can overcome that. And I know you can. This has been In Future Tense. Have an intense future. This has been Real Talk. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, thanks guys for watching Future Tense. If you liked what you saw, please uh, feel free to subscribe and share. Uh, and if you didn't like what you saw, please leave something in the comments below so I can improve my content matter and make sure that I keep things appropriate and pertinent to uh, what you guys are looking for. Hope you guys are having a great day. Talk to you soon. Thanks for joining in Future Tense or Intense Future!